The Braves have no question about their present and their future at first base, but what do we make of Matt Olson's first season in Atlanta, and what does it tell us going into 2023? This is BPTV, Corey McCartney and Grant McCauley with you as we look at what went right, what went wrong, and what's next at first base. And Grant, I think it's fair to say Olson's first season, in essence, was an idiom, peaks and valleys. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, we saw the ups and the downs throughout the course of the season. I feel like coming out of the gates, we saw the best of Matt Olson. Then for a while, it seemed like he had to figure a few things out. Seemed like he did figure things out. Then as you got late into the dog days of summer and kind of coming down the stretch, you might have seen the worst of Matt Olson that he has seen in quite a few years. But he was able to, I feel like, right the ship at the end, had a very big series against the New York Mets. And when you do look at the totality of this season, I think it's an indicator of what the low bar is for Matt Olson. And hopefully he'll be able to take some steps back towards maybe the player he looked like in 2021, which was, of course, the best season of his young career. So let's start with what went right as Olson produced a 3.1 fan graph war season with 34 home runs, 44 doubles tied for second in the majors and has 103 RBIs and 120 way to run creative plus he ended on an absolute tear earning the last NL player of the week and rode that into the postseason where he had two home runs, five RBI and a 1363 OPS. The barrel rate, hard hit rate, sweet spot percentage were all his best since 2019 defensively. Led all NL first baseman in scoops. He found himself a finalist for both the gold glove and silver slugger. Oh, and the thing that was maybe most right of all was happened before his first at bat when he signed that eight-year $168 million <laughs> extension immediately after he was acquired via trade. Yeah, you know, it's like, do you like your gloves gold? Do you like your bats to be silver? Well, everybody likes their paycheck to be the most green as possible. And Matt Olson certainly got that. It was at the time a record contract for the Braves franchise. Of course, Austin Riley already eclipsed that. And those two guys will be seeing a lot of each other over the next, oh, I don't know, nearly decade, or at least the rest of this decade for Atlanta. But that aside, and looking you know solely at what Matt Olson was able to do, I, I really don't know that defensively even we saw the best of him this year. There seemed to be those plays where you felt like, okay, there's the guy I've heard about. Then there seemed to be some other plays that you just kind of wondered how exactly did that happen? And I feel like, you know, some of that every once in a while, some plays, some balls, the, the bounces are just going to eat you up. It's just not going to go your way. But I feel like Matt Olson has a little bit of room to improve there, despite being a gold glove finalist. And of course, you know, slugging wise, you know, second most runs batted in, in his career, second to his 2021 season, same thing for runs scored. You know, he, it was respectable as far as the way to run is created. Plus, and all of this in his age 28 season to have about a three war, I think that for most people, they look at that and say, that's a pretty productive year, but that is the lowest production at that position for Atlanta since 2015, when Freddie Freeman only played 118 games. And of course, I don't know that we can talk about Matt Olson necessarily without Freddie Freeman's name coming up eventually. And he was off in LA putting up an MVP caliber season. So that might've also painted or at least uh, changed the tint of the lens of through which Matt Olson's season was viewed. Yeah, I want to get into that to a second here. I mentioned the Valleys in Olsen's season. They really led to some wild splits and what went wrong. He had a 143 way to run creative plus in the first month of the season, then dipped to 91, and it was frankly much lower than that before the late push during the month of September. He also struck out a lot, a career-high 170 to be exact. Yeah. And I never thought of Olsen as a three-true-outcomes guy, but in hitting 240, his lowest of any 162-game season to go with 34 homers, 170 Ks and 75 walks, he became the 12th player in history to have those kind of numbers in a season. So that putting him along those out kind of three true outcome guys that you think of with Kyle Schwarber, Joey Gallo, Chris Davis, Adam Dunn. I did not see that coming. And while he was a gold glove finalist, this was his worst, uh, one of his worst seasons from a metric standpoint with the glove. He tied for a career low with minus two defensive war, had the fewest defensive runs saved over 162 game seasons since 2017. Grant, we talked a little bit about it, but what stood out to you among those wild swings, some of them wild swings quite literally in his season? Yeah, I was going to say, if you didn't say it, I had to say the wild swings for Olsen were up markedly over his 2021 season when he struck out just 16.8% of the time. That jumped nearly 8%, a 7.5% if we want to be exact here from year to year. I don't expect it to be a nearly 24, 25% strikeout rate, but it has been in the past. So maybe the outlier was what he did in 2021 when it just seemed like perhaps he was getting into the prime of his career and his focus at the plate in terms of, you know, just limiting the swing and miss. If we want to just boil it down to that, it was something that was trending in the right direction. Took a step back in that department this year, no question about it. But as you mentioned, the production was there, 34 home runs, you know, second most that he's hit, I believe. 
uh, in a, in his you know big league career. At the very least, the third time he's hit 30 home runs. The Braves needed to see that. The 100 RBIs, the 100 runs scored, all that stuff or, or close to it is great. And that's things I think that he can accomplish each and every year. Got to the century plateau in runs batted in again. And at the very least, I think the Braves needed somebody to do some semblance of that in losing Freddie Freeman. But yeah, that's the swings and miss. The walk percentage was down slightly. The fielding, you know, you just laid it all out. And I'd mentioned it a little bit earlier. I don't think we've seen the best of medals at first base. I think it can be better and maybe new league, new ballpark, a lot of new things going on. You know, he'll just start to get a little bit more comfortable with a year under his belt and be able to kind of get back to the essence of being the player that he's shown himself to be throughout his time in Oakland and the player that the Braves acquired and are very much hoping that they've invested in for the next, what, seven years. Yeah, and I talked to Olsen about his defense during the season, and he said he had less foul ground, obviously, than he had to deal with in Oakland. So you think yeah. from a metric standpoint, everything would have been up, but obviously did not play it itself out in those final lines that we saw from his season. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on a story, a tired storyline that you had mentioned, but certainly he came home, had to replace a franchise icon and former MVP and Freddie Freeman. As we look at what's next for Olsen, at least all that weirdness is going to be out of the way for him. So he does not have to deal with all that going into 2023. And when you look at the steamer projections for him, 35 home runs, 100 weighted, uh, 100 RBIs, 128 weighted run creative plus, a 3-4 fan graph or in a word grant, solid. Yeah, and I think that we've seen Matt Olson have and create a range in which you can expect him to exceed those numbers. I mean, at the at the very least, it is a solid projection for what Matt Olson needs to give the Braves pretty much annually over the course of this contract for it to be the player that you know he wants to be quite clearly and who the Braves need him to be because I think he's still a four to six win player if he really gets going and gets himself on a significant role. He was a five win player in his last year with Oakland. I think if we see an uptick in the defense, maybe a down taking the strikeouts and just a little bit more contact and hey this might be one of those guys where banning the shift could really help him to step forward and pick up quite a few points in the old batting average that might not have been available to him as he was regularly shifted upon as were many left-handed hitters uh, over the course of 2022 and of course before that so we'll see if that has any kind of effect on what Matt Olson's able to do as well it can't hurt I would imagine if you're able to get a few more base hits that were getting you know getting fielded and you're thrown out at first and even when you hit the ball hard you're hitting it right at somebody but now that somebody can't be in the place he used to be yeah, that's a good point uh, the, uh, banning the shift by the way certainly you have to wait and see what happens at shortstop but also what is it was at his best hitting third last season where he had an 869 OPS had 19 extra base hits Initially, he hit second, slid all the way down to fifth, right? Before, you know, obviously, when he went on that, la that late tear, that led into that. But everyday lineup, where are you ideally hitting Matt Olson in 2023? I think he's a kind of a prototypical three hitter for me. He could back clean up. And, and I think that there was a lot made of, you know, the, for a while, everything seemed to be working with Matt Olson batting third, Austin Riley hitting fourth. Both of those guys kind of fell into slumps later on. Was it because they had moved in the lineup? Maybe, maybe not. I don't really know that it makes that big of a difference. I think that sometimes it's just the peaks and valleys you mentioned way back when we started this thing that a hitter is going to go through in a season. But ideally, I would have him hitting third. But if this is a season in which maybe Ronald Acuna Jr. is your leadoff hitter, I don't think we have too many questions about that. But Michael Harris is batting second. Then maybe Austin Riley hitting third and medals and hitting fourth makes a lot of sense from a lineup construction standpoint to avoid some of the late bullpen management and the ease of going through maybe multiple left-handed hitters in a row in the case of Harris and Olsen. But all of that, it's just finding places where guys are comfortable, letting them know to a expect to see their name in the lineup every day. And Matt Olson sure did last year and you know where they're going to be and what the expectations are. And I think everybody's going to be pretty comfortable regardless of whether he's hitting third or fourth, but I don't see him as that number two hitter. Freddie Freeman and Matt Olson, there are a lot of similarities between the two of them, but they are not carbon copies of one another. And I think that Freddie Freeman showed again in 2022 in his age 32 season that he is still an excellent contact hitter and capable of doing a whole lot of the things that made him a franchise great in Atlanta. But Matt Olson doesn't have to be Freddie Freeman. He just has to be Matt Olson. And I think, as you pointed out, that's pretty darn good too. Yeah, Riley had over a thousand OPS when he was hitting fourth, and you had you know uh, Olson at third, and Olson, as I mentioned, Florida with nine hundred. So if that's your three and four again, uh, using the good. same word there, that's pretty, that's pretty solid. Uh, this is obviously a spot the Braves are set at potentially through twenty thirty with an option year for that deal. It's the Matt Olson era for sure. At first, we've got you covered with all things Braves this offseason with what went right, 
what went wrong, what went next in this series, and whatever happens on the hot stove. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and tell a friend. And also, don't forget to find us on From the Diamond wherever you find your podcast. Until next time, I'm Corey McCartney. He's Grant McCauley, and we'll see you soon, Braves Country.